this year's World Economic Forum meeting is all about cooperation in a fragmented world, coming together to tackle global issues. Joining me now to discuss is Coindesk's Chief Content Officer. We've got Michael Casey. We've got Managing Editor of Global Policy and Regulation, Nick Day, and Deputy Managing Editor for Europe, we've got Sonali. Thank Hi. you so much for joining us, guys. It's the Team Coindesk in DeVos. Here we are again. <laughs> Michael, you are here again. This is well, these guys were here uh, uh, back my in May as well. Time. Your first time. You're the veteran here. But, yeah, well, I You're have been here You're speaking at the panels. Times. Yeah, once again, reminding everyone of my age. So I'm very curious, you know, compared to previous years, what is the crypto presence here? And then I guess zooming out the overall sentiment. Well, I mean, compared to previous years, the, the thing is the best benchmark to use is probably the previous Davos, which actually wasn't 12 months ago. It was only, whatever, eight, nine months ago in May when both Nick and Sandy Lee were here with us. And at that point, the presence, the sort of marketing presence on the promenade, which is the big street that runs out away from the, the Congress, is all the external uh, part of the, the Davos experience, was just seemed to be filled with crypto companies and, and everything else. And this year, they're still here. Um, it's not as if they've gone away. And, and in some respects, they, they, it's a defining feature of the promenade to have those companies. But it certainly doesn't feel like it's the same buzz and hype that was really a, a, a peak, I would say, uh, back in May. Um, Does a crypto you know, winner have something to do well, with that? It's hard to imagine it's not, right? I mean, there's definitely, it is the elephant in the room that people keep on referring to, the FTX moment, the, the meltdown, the sort of, you know, it, 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 Crypto has always had an awkward relationship with the WEF, I think. You know, this, this sort of crazy barbarians outside the gates and, and the, uh, the sort of government leaders and the state button-down suits all inside. Um, and it's now just even more, I would say, I don't know about tense, but certainly this, this uh, you know, dichotomy is probably even starker because of the kind of blow a little bit to the goodwill that's happened as mm -hmm. a result of the, the meltdown. Well, speaking of collapses, so, so we're, we're – Getting news reportedly that Three Arrows Capital is trying to raise $25 million for their new venture, which is interesting uh, if this is uh, true. Now, you're looking at regulation. Is crypto on the radar of policymakers right now? And are they willing to forgive and forget uh, what's happened in the crypto industry? Just, uh, I mean, it was just last year, a month ago. <laughs> I, I mean, generally, it's, it's definitely on radar. It's on everyone's radar. It's an area of major concern, I think, for a lot of regulators. A lot of lawmakers in particular have, you know, kind of, even if they were, if not, you know, crazy about crypto, they might have just been, you know, along the lines of, oh, crypto exists and it's something that my, you know, constituents are interested in. So I'm going to at least acknowledge it and pay attention to it. After FTX, there's a lot more concern, a lot more skepticism of the industry at large, just because... FTX hurt a lot of people in this collapse. You know, we're hearing numbers of as many as 9 million creditors across the world, which is a pretty significant figure for what up until, you know, last year maybe was not seen as a particularly huge industry. So regulators, I think, generally are definitely paying attention. As far as the, you know, Davos presence goes, we're seeing, uh, we are still seeing, you know, crypto in the official uh, World Economic Forum conference. There's a couple of panels around CBDCs, around you know tokenization, around digital identity. But what's kind of more interesting, uh, interesting to me is that the events hosted by crypto companies are also seeing policymakers. So we have you know from the U.S. CFTC commissioners, so Commodities Future Trading Commission regulators uh, speaking at events. We've got representatives from the United Nations. We have central bank governors. Mm -hmm. So there is a a surprising amount of outreach from regulators. It's interesting you say that because, you know, on the promenade, you can just bump into anyone. I bumped into uh, Sebastian Bourget from The Sandbox. He's working on Metaverse projects, obviously. And I just happened to be with the Austrian delegation with the uh, Austrian National Bank, uh, as well as some folks who run the crypto hub there. And they immediately talked to Sebastian. They were working out deals. They were talking about the metaverse. And so there's definitely some policy policymakers and entrepreneurs here who are locking arms and making collaborations happen in real time. And sadly, you've been also keeping your eye on TradFi as well as crypto companies. What are you expecting out of this week? Yes, thank you. I was here last time as well covering regulations. That's what I usually cover. And you know, regulators, last time when we were here, they were saying, oh, you know, we're not sure about crypto, but there is promise in the technology. There was 
bit of caution when addressing the topic, even though it was part of these larger panels in the, in the main Congress. Um, so I think this is a great opportunity for crypto post FTX to really focus on real life use cases. Um, it's, I think the programming actually helped them out a little bit. It's made crypto part of a larger conversation around the metaverse, around financial inclusion, around fintech and trade tech. So I'm looking forward to kind of crypto coming up in these forums and how um, companies that are on the promenade are going to pitch new projects. I'm uh, looking forward to seeing this uh, climate initiative come into play this week later. Um, there are ESG efforts going on. There's a lot of talk about you know, projects, uh, blockchain projects around financial inclusion that I'm looking forward to seeing. I can't say much because I know they want to keep it a surprise as well. But um, overall, really excited to see who's right. here and what they have got.